आनंद निकेतन कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर बरोरा शून्य यूनिवर्सिटी सोलन रियात बहारा यूनिवर्सिटी मोहाली चंडीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी क्वांटम यूनिवर्सिटी रुड़की बाबा फ्रीद ग्रुप ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन भटिंडा एंड मेनी मोर अदर स्टेट एग्रीकल्चर यूनिवर्सिटीज सो बिफोर बिगिनिंग द प्रोग्राम आई वुड लाइक टू टेल अवर पार्टिसिपेंट्स अबाउट द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम सो जस्ट एग्रीकल्चर इज इंडियाज मोस्ट आइज इन एग्रीकल्चर मैगजीन विद मोर देन वन पॉइंट 1.1 lakh readers in India, and first issue of the magazine was launched on 5th September 2020. Until now, 19 issues of our magazine are published, and it is the most credible platform for researchers, students, scientists uh, to share their ideas on latest innovative topics. And on the other hand, AEFWS Society aims at enhancing the livelihood opportunities for more than one million uh, farm households in the country. and these these two are the among uh, among the largest network of agriculture and allied uh, sector professionals in the country right now now coming to the session today i feel very privileged to welcome our guest of honor and speaker of the session dr rc shivastra honorable vice chancellor dr rajendra prasad central agriculture university pusha smastipur and organizing director of this training pro program dr dps bhadwal course director of the training program dr mohit bhardwaj and members of the organizing committee and most importantly the attendees of this session so i uh, warmly welcome our chief guest of this session dr rp uh, rc swastwa sir uh, before inviting sir to deliver his lecture let me briefly introduce sir to inspire our participants okay so sir has done bsc agriculture engineering mtech and phd from iit kharagpur and his specialization is rainwater management uh, integrated farming system and ground water management since 1978 sir has served as scientist senior scientist principal scientist and director in various agriculture institutions institutes like uh, vp uh, vpks almora vtcer bhubneshwar central agriculture research institute port blair andaman and nicobar island and uh, in Indian Institute of Water Management, Bhuvaneshwar, and since two thousand and sixteen, sir is serving as the Vice Chancellor of Dr. Rajendra Prasad Central Agriculture University, Pusa, and the sir has been awarded with various uh, awards, uh, namely Rafi Ahmed Kidwai Award, AS uh, AP Award of Indian Society of Agriculture Engineer Engineers, and Commendation Medal for of Indian Society of Agriculture. Engineers and National Bihar Education Summit Award, Distinguished Alumni Award, and Higher Education Leadership Award, Education Excellence Award by Confederation of Indian University, and Lifetime Achievement Award by Andaman Science Association, and many more. And he is also two-time awardee of Vasant Rao Naik Award of ICR and uh, Rajendra Prasad, uh, Prasad uh, Award of ICR. And uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Honorable Prime, uh, Prime Minister mentioned. state model developed by rpcau in the 18th edition of uh, his mon ki baat on 29th august 2021 so the uh, so the uh, so the uh, uh, so the vice chancellor sir has done uh, many has done many uh, things in the in his specialization and the list is very long so i am not i'm not able to explain everything in such a short, a short span of time so i'm uh, now i just want to invite sir to deliver his lecture and inspire our participants so over to you sir hello le naalo anga iru so please tell me six one go come anga Sir, you are on mute. Kindly unmute yourself. कोशिश 
बाहर राशिद कमाल खान का पिछले ओवर में विकेट चटकाया था इस ओवर में बढ़िया कैच किया फ्रेंड्स ने बनाए थे तेज से पूजा को पास रहा Uh, anyone from the admin side can the moderate the session please just we are not understanding as a participant what's happening at the at the background सर आवाज ही नहीं आ रही है सर नो सर 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 आई 
ろI request you uh, to the team of RPCU Pusa, please uh, resolve the issue of mic. Participants, please wait for five, uh, five to ten minutes. The team uh, RPC Pusa are resolving the technical issue which they are facing with their mic. So please uh, kindly uh, be patient. Uh, 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 uh. Am I audible now? We, uh, yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, <laughs> well, that's so. It happens is with technology, sometimes you always land up with the. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. It, hop, it happens quite often. Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to interact with you people and uh, 
is mainly when you talk about that <clears throat> when we are talking about the futuristic keywords, I found that in that futuristic approach, smart agriculture and sustainable. Futuristic means we are going to deal with the youngsters. And when I talk about youngsters, that fills me with hope that the country is going to be in the safe and we are going to hand over the responsibility, hand over the society, hand over the country to the people who are much better trained, much better, they are looking after to the future in a better way. They have trained to deal with the problems in a better manner than what we were trained. When I look back, the facilities, the atmosphere which we had, we had some gloomy periods, but still, we were very sure that we are going to have a bright future. And today, youngsters are luckier than us. They have got even more good news for their future that know they will be getting. It. But at the same time, the as far as the agriculture is concerned, you have written agriculture 3.0. So what do you mean by the agriculture 3.0? that we have already crossed two stages of agriculture where we talk about mainly that what the agriculture is doing, what people can achieve from agriculture. Am I continuing to be audible? Hello? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. So what I am telling that when we talk about the agriculture three, we have to make agriculture suitable for our new generation. The first generation was okay with whatever they were able to cultivate with just some increase in the income. Second generation has to be given a higher income level, thinking less gradually, and thus came higher yielding variety higher mechanization, level of the mechanization, more, uh, better facility for processing and all that. Now what's happening, what's going to offer, give, offer this agriculture tree? The in agriculture tree, we have to tackle a few very important things. The very first thing is the resources. Earlier we had resources in plenty. Land was also sufficient. Water was never level. The spells were healthy. Now you are facing the problem in all. With the division, then division and division, along with the uh, generations, the size of the holdings has reduced very small. Secondly, the resources, like water and the soil, the water resources are reducing. The threshold value was 1,750 cubic meter per person. It has reduced now below 1,750 for whole country. And in two, uh, some part, larger part of the country, it has reduced even gone up to 1,200 and 1,300 per capita. So we are facing the problem of water. And my data is the biggest user of the water, about it, more than 80%, 82-83% water is used for agriculture by agriculture. Third is the soil. With the continuous exploitation, we are facing the soil. Soils have become unhealthy. We also some, we say sometimes, marine, mati bimar. We have to see that we are recovered. Now with this, the returns from a unit land or per capita, which we say, had reduced significantly. And a young man, 
may not find it attractive enough to go for thorn. Some 12, 14 years back, I coined a word, decent livelihood. That we have to make our agriculture to provide a decent livelihood to our youngsters. And a parliamentary committee asked me, what do you mean by the decent livelihood? I told, for me, decent livelihood is a level of livelihood at which, which is compatible, please mind my words, which is compatible to the capability and aspiration of the person. The per every person has got a different capability and everybody has got a different aspiration levels and the livelihood which is available to him has to be compatible with that. Now can our agriculture be such a level of livelihood? That is the thing we talk about the futuristic keywords which we have given your training program, futuristic, smart, and such. I don't know that smart is a totally different word. Someone may look smart to somebody and it's all the chemistry between the two individuals. And the same person may not look smart to some other person. But when we talk about the other two words, futuristic and the sustainable, it has to be seen that. So we at RPC came out with two things. First thing, luckily in the eastern India, we are rich in the water. So how to utilize our water? And not only that, we are problem, we have had one problem of excess water in some months and the poor water availability in the other months. How to manage that? That for that we work for the technology. And we found that we can easily do it by just tweaking our things. Like Bihar has 2,800 kilometers of the river length. Now, on the both sides of the river, there are the areas which get flooded every year. And that's not the fault of the Bihar. The fault lies, the excess rainfall, the UP, Uttarakhand, Haryana, Punjab, the upper part of the Ganga catchment, and another part of the catchment which lies in Nepal. Now you can't control the floods in, uh, water in Nepal. It's all hilly. You don't have place where to store the water, excess water. So water has to come down in the plains and create the havoc in the heart. So we have to tackle that water. But at the same time, when we are pumping, there after uh, uh, 20 meters, 30 meters, there is a thick clay layer. It doesn't allow water to move freely, to move that clearly to the second aquifer from where we pump the water for irrigating. So at the same time, we are facing the problem of poor water availability, declining water table. So we have come out with the technology system now by which we are recharging our second aquifer by the excess water which we are receiving in during the monsoon. And that is helping us in reducing the water congestion and not reducing the world water logging because so if you are many doing from the Punjab. In Punjab when and Haryana, when we talk of the water logging, we talk of the water level being in the root zone of the crop. But here water logging means you have got more than one fit of the water in the field. So that water has to be removed. And since it's all flooded all the way. So you cannot drain it in the rivers. So it has to be sent in the groundwater. 
and if you want to send it groundwater, it has to be filtered, it has to be made clean so that it doesn't contaminate our uh, aquifer and create problems for our future. So when you talk about the future state, you have to see that we don't endanger our future. So there the technology comes and you have to think about that technology. So you have to take care of the water. Now second comes soil. Soil, as I told, the soil is getting thick. It is getting thick. Why? Because some of the micronutrients, you are mining them. You are not exploiting them, you are mining them. I hope you understand the difference between exploiting a ore. Something and mining it. When we call mining, mining means we are taking the material from very deep, which cannot be replenished with. And that has happened to the, our file. So what was the one of the reasons that if we save a part of our manual fertilizer requirement, nutrient requirement from inorganic sources to organic sources, we will be able to utilize, uh, make our file a bit healthy again. Now that is very easy to say than implement it. We have got huge amount of the cotton, huge amount of our the household waste, which can be converted into organic fertilizer, but we don't have system. And that cotton is used for fuel, domestic fuel. The government of India came out, Honorable PM started with this Udwala program, so the people were given all the infrastructure related infrastructure with LPG gas, even including the first gas cylinder. But given their uh, economic condition, they were not able to get it refilled. Now, how to do it? But we at RPC did it. We started thinking where the issue like most of the people say, okay. To make a vermi compost, make a go for gas. It's not that easy. It was not as easy to change their lifestyle. Once when I was traveling on the road, I found that on the fly was when you have must have seen in the even I have seen the even Haryana Punjab highway also that on the flyover wall of the flyover, you will find the carbon cake being put up there and getting dried. You must have seen one of the that where the lady throwing the powder and cake on that wall and getting fit with such a fineness and such an accuracy that someone told that she is even fit for the uh, Indian cricket team. We, as far as they have the accuracy of throwing a powder and cake is concerned. So, how we thought that if we, what's happening? The a normal village folk. Is finding that the cow doesn't be free for him. Because he has got the cow, he has got the bullock, also he feed two of them. And the cow dung is available every day for him. He has got no power. No opportunity cost with the economist call. And they have got the ladies in the house, which again they have labor, they say that they don't have the opportunity cost. Their labor has got no power. They so, what we said, can we manage this syndrome? We said, let us take out the gobble itself from their houses. Don't think that they will be throwing, uh, sending it somewhere, throwing it somewhere, they will be asking, come bring it here, induce their labor. So, we said, we will collect the gobble from their household. And at the same time, we will collect their household waste also, which is degradable waste and the non-degradable waste separately. Bring it to a center, make a vermicompost, and that vermicompost utilizes it for the till it 
and the money which we are getting from the vermi compost do it for refilling of their cylinder once in a two months that is the normal cycle which they use they, that much they can jump in not more than that and that click to be honest i was very skeptical since i also it was my concept but at the same time i was worried chalega ki nahi chalega yaar log kaise kaam agree karenge ki nahi karenge but with the god's grace and just my guy the click and now they are very happy they are daily because we did it why we sakti that sometimes just to take that i was discussing with my colleague that suppose someone out that for uh, big thing you did it you just made a burning compost of it and proven technology so what did you do it is not i said then let you think over it how you are going to reply somebody and the reply straight away came only one reply that no we didn't interfere much in their routine we didn't ask them mood can you why ye karte the tum ab ispe change ho jao we said okay we there are minimum interference and we are giving you something and that click the thing as uh, our host was talking honorable prime minister was kind enough to mention it in man ki baat upsc i don't know from where they heard it and they asked a question in their civil service interview and finally the icing on the cake was that india post released a stamp on it so nothing can be more satisfying to a scientist like that this is the way when we talk of the futuristic technology or anything which we can do second comes now how to increase the income at the same time environment futuristic when we talk of the future our future threat is going to come from the environment our environment are getting problematic with the waste which we are creating daily our household waste urban area the agriculture based in the agriculture as you see the parali being burnt in punjab and haryana and affect up to the delhi now in bihar and all the areas which we most of us eat a banana but have we any idea that after the banana is harvested what happens to that plant Uh, i don't know how many of you know that banana plant once it grows it proves after the fruiting it's of no use it has to be harvested the, along with the full plant has to be harvested and put aside the new plant has to come up sometimes the raccoon comes up for three years you have to plant a new plant there now how we can do now the if you are the farmer for him it is a waste it lies down near his plot get rotten becomes a home for breeding for the mosquitoes and the house fly and other insects and he is in trouble what we did is was a known technology again not very much anything of the science in that but we said how to do it so what we did we started making fiber of it and the fiber we said we will be using it many people said that such and such country is using at a, a yarn menegal a yarn banane ke liye mujhe 2 crore ke kisi ke liye that i can't afford so how to do it i said okay we will not go for that level reduce it at them and then i asked my since this is an area but the ladies are very good in making the handicrafts you must have heard the name of madhavan painting and other things i said okay let them give the fiber and they will make the wall hanging let them give the poor cause the good quality for that second good quality make the rugs and third quality we are using for the as a filling material in your mattresses and all that and it's working very well and now the farmer is getting 5 rupees to 10 rupees for one pseudo stem it is being uh, carried from the farmer's field to the 
place for where we are making the uh, fiber. So the people are getting job in that. People are getting livelihood in making the fiber. The ladies self help cooks, which we have they taken over, they are making it uh, uh, things out of it. They are creating beautiful uh, wall hanging, and even that is now hanging in Rashtrapati Bhavan and the Uprashtrapati Bhavan. So that is making the things. Similarly, now second picture which we are using is the pig and pea stock. Pig and pea stock. After the pigeon peas, pigeon peas taken out, it was getting dry and being used as a fuel. Now with the gas, with the other fuel available to the ladies, nobody is ready to use it as a fuel. What to do with it? Now it is becoming another menace. What we found that when we are talking about the cutlery. In between the middle portion, we are making furniture. The top portion, we are using it for the making of the fix. That's what we will. And now the farmer is also getting the money. In the process they are making, the people are getting the livelihood. So that way, when we talk of the future, if someone wants to become an entrepreneur, use this technology and create the jobs and also become a job provider instead of a job seeker. Most of the time, our honorable prime minister is telling that. Third, make. Maize is produced all along the country. What we do, maize is harvested. The corn is again taken out, sold out from that. Then after what we, what happens to the remaining part? Most of the time it is thrown on the site and it becomes a minus again for our tennis channels. When I was talking about the old drainage, one of the major reasons for our water congestion in our city is that our all drainage lines are, drainage systems are choked, choked by what? These are the things we broken. We said, can we make it something out of it? And we found that we can use it for making packaging material as a replacement of thermocline. And I don't know how many of you know but the type of thermal. It takes 500 years for a thermocool seat which we just throw out of our house when something is, some uh, equipment is received at your home, whether be it a mixer, whether be it a fan, whether be it a refrigerator, or be it a uh, AC. That takes 500 years to degenerate. But if we use this uh, major stock material, it's going to be generated within six months. So we are saving the money. Even in the other stock also, when I said, okay, what from where we are getting this wooden cutlery, I was told it is mainly made of the poplar. A poplar tree takes around six years to mature. To become the useful, while the other uh, stock is taking just nine months to make to convert that. So we can say it is a quickly renewable material, similar for the major stock. It is quickly renewable within four months, it is ready, four to five months, and then it gets regenerated within six months, next six months. So your best is used. You are getting money out of that and your environment is also safe. So these are the things. Again, another food which is mainly common in Bihar, very little, not much outside Bihar, that is lychee. Lychee stone, again, doesn't degenerate 
So quickly. And one of the reasons for the Bihar songs, I say, sometimes jokingly, because then it, it will come up in the market after 20th of the May, just for the market for 15 to 20 days. And then after the whole will go in the uh, Daniel system, and it monsoon comes, it chokes the whole Daniel uh, line. And after that, the city is waterlogged. What we said that can be used for? For what? Then I said my colleagues, we talked about it and we found that it can be used for a, one of the ingredients of the fish feed. So, again, you are saving it, the our the places from the choking it, from the drain uh, water logging and using it for whatever. You are reducing the cost of uh, fish feed by around 5 to 10 rupees kg. Third, again, one of the things was our low turmeric. Turmeric grown, the tuber is taken out, the leaves are thrown away. I said, can we make something about the leaves? I asked my biochemist, don't you think there will be aisle in it? Because if you take the algae, uh, leaves, it will give you some oily feel. He said, Sir, hoga to jau. Man ka oil nika lo isme. He took off the oil in that. And that essential oil, we have found that it's very good for as a mosquito repellent, as a house fly repellent. It can replace the liquid which we use in the good night and uh, allowed. It can replace your ligel which we use in the house for pocha and then after the uh, house don't come. Here you are, we are trying, we are getting it tested so that we can get the certification and then after it will be. So another, again, a best. Then every day in the uh, sabji market, you will find at the end of the day, there will be vegetables which will be lying there. The municipal well, uh, committee, the truck will come and load it and uh, take it and throw in the landfill where it will rot, give a bad foul, all the smell, and then you will abuse the municipality wala that what we said, there will be many vegetables which has got the juice, which has got color. If we collect the proper quality, quality of vegetables which are wasted in the evening, wash it, kill it, make the juice out of it. That juice, use it as a color for the Gulal, you'll get herbal and that herbal gulal with very less price, less money, and again your best if you like. So these are the seven eight technologies which we have developed, and it can be used as an interpretation. So that's why when you talked about the topic came to me, the topic is and sustainable. I said it is good both. And for the investors, you talk of the future, you talk about, I think of the investors. Our investors can earn money from Pura. One of the tagline in that, uh, our Sukhet model was, Aap hume Pura dijiye. Aap hume Pura aur Goba dijiye. Hum aapko best so that was the thing that we thought that no, we are going to be technology for utilizing your waste material, which you think that as was total waste, it could not be used anything. We are going to give you livelihood from that waste. And that waste will give you livelihood, give you earning, which 
at the same time, you will be able to save the environment. So when we talk of the future state, you will be saving the future. We are sustainable since daily you will be getting the waste. You are not mining some resources which are not to be renewed on a quickly basis. So you are you, at the same time, whatever is remaining of that, that can be converted in the organic fertilizer, organic manure, not the condition. We will never land up in the situation where Sri Lanka has landed up because of dependence upon the organic manure being brought from outside. But we are talking that no, the organic manure has to be produced locally. And locally also means that very much locally at the farmer's level, where he will produce it and then he will make all his soils healthy. Need not to be that all the organic certification, everybody can't afford that costly material. We don't want that, no, all the, and that's my personal view. Maybe some persons will say, nahi, organic mein bo hai, all that. I'm telling why to go for 100% organic, it is difficult task, it is difficult to get a certification and then there is always an issue of malpractices in that. So let us think of only that we will be putting up organic pleasure in our manure in that and that manure will be using us and by that we will be producing something which will be better for our, better for our future, better for our livelihood of our youth which need not to be a treasury one, a livelihood, which will be compatible to their capability and aspiration. That's my tagline, that no, the livelihood which we talk, by whichever means of the agriculture, it should be, or by any other uh, profession, it should be compatible to their capability and aspiration so that they feel that they are being used by society depending upon their capability. And they are not being searched by somebody who is exploiting them given their conditions. That's my idea. I, it was a real pleasure to share with you my ideas. I'm a bit radical in my ideas. I talk something different. You must might not have heard such sort of the radical thing uh, with that when we talk about something which is not normally to say a bit different. I try to be different. Might be you might be remember you of you one of the uh, advertisement of tomato sauce. I think it was Dave Jaffrey which used to do that. Uh, it is different. So what I told when I talk about technology, when I talk about uh, my university, I always say, look, first thing, come to me, they tell, let us see what is different. It has to be different. I try to be a different than what a normal lecture which you have thought of hearing from a vice chancellor. But I feel that no, our youth has to be told something different. They have to be different. Only then they will make this country great and different in its approach. A different route to reach to the height of prosperity, to the height of happiness, and to the a new aura in the community of Christians. That I pray God to give strength to my youth of this country to achieve these goals. And God bless you all, my youngsters. God bless you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir. It was an insightful session, and it is uh, it is our pleasure to have you on the board sir it's our privilege to directly interact with you and know your views about entrepreneurship your views and reason about entrepreneurship is very very beneficial for our participants 
and stakeholders also. And uh, as uh, all of us know that Just Agriculture is India's largest agri-learning platform. And our team is working relentlessly for the welfare of agriculture in India. So we seek your blessings, sir, and we need your guidance. So in, up in upcoming months, we are coming up with some offline events like uh, conferences. So we hope to see you and meet you in these events. So, and our audience is also requesting to meet you physically, sir. So it is an honor for us to have you on board and I hope that we will meet very soon and we heartily need your blessing, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. sir. Uh, we have some questions from the participants. So if you give me... Yeah, yeah welcome. Yeah, sir. So the question is, sir, that as you know that this year we are facing extremely high temperatures, uh, especially in North India. So according to you, uh, what challenges Indian agriculture will face this year? Yeah, because of the high temperature, the very first challenge which we are facing is the reduced yield of the wheat. We are very happy in the first week of the month, uh, March, that we'll be getting bumper yield of the wheat. But unfortunately, the high temperature has put uh, hold on the streams. And uh, thus, uh, this is going to be uh, our loss. And that is the problem with uh, I'm talking about the climate change, that it is the unpredictability of the weather which is going to create havoc. And the coming years, we will have to think on the, our building strategy, our cropping strategy, crop turn strategy. That how to bear up the unpredictable uh, event. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir, our government is promoting many cultivation modules like uh, organic farming, natural farming, and we have other modules like uh, conventional farming, integrated farming system. So, uh, according to you, what uh, for what mod module Indian farmer should go for and uh, for the sustainability of the crops and uh, yield? For a country of our size and diversity, no model can be adopted all over the country for all the conditions. I have been talking on these lines and I always say, let us diversify this in few pockets. Let it be natural farming, those who cannot do it. At some organic farming, at some, it should be the mixed farming of the organic as well as the chemical. Let us mix it, not be the pure organic farming all the places because it will be difficult to arrange for the inputs, not see that there will be no more practices as far as the quality of the organic manures are concerned. So it has to be a mix of everything. As we have got a mix of our political system, you will not find that we have it over a single party all over the country. Like even if there is a single something, something will emerge. So you have to be a mix and that mix has to depend on the farmer's individual condition. It cannot be a side which fits all. We have to be very, very careful in this. Otherwise, we may land in trouble. But uh, luckily, unfortunately for Sri Lanka, but fortunately for us, we have seen a model which has failed and which has failed so miserable in that country in dire state. And that we have to learn before we jump on a single model, no single model. As for that's my personal opinion, that no single model can work in this country. As we say, no single political line can work, no single political philosophy can work in this country. Similarly, our diversity, our strength, whatever be the diversity, that diversity has to be maintained in the agriculture. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir, as concerned with uh, organic farming, so we have a, a system for certification of crops under organic farming, but still there are reports that uh, uh, some kind of residues of pesticides we are finding in organic products. So what are the loopholes uh, in this process? Is the uh, certification is not proper or what uh, What do you think about this? No, we all know of us. Let us be honest. Uh, there will always be some people who will be trying to get a loophole here or there in the system. And yes. that's why I always say, you will never find a fully organic material very strict with a stringent rule. So it's better 
नॉट टू इंसिस्ट हम फुल्ली ऑर्गेनिक मिला जुला के चले ज्यादा बेहतर है एक के ऊपर चलेंगे मुसीबत होगी मार्जिन ऑफ दिजेंस टू डू देश जुगाड़ है तो जुगाड़ इसका भी है की कैसा सिस्टम को बाईपास किया जाए Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So one of our participant has asked that what are the entrepreneurship opportunities in organic agriculture as per you? There is huge opportunity of the organic agriculture at present. The only thing you have to be careful to see that to follow the norms and see that you don't get you don't do any malpractices. Otherwise, you have got the something. You have got a huge opportunity. There is a very, very big market waiting for you in the field of the organic agriculture. Whether be the supply of the inputs, whether you are growing the organic, or thank you sir so uh, as per you what are the challenges uh, which are faced by the organic farmers in india the, the very first challenge to an organic farmer is the availability of a quality organic in that is the biggest challenge to him because he is not able to get that organic input of the quality and once he getting then after the certification and third is that marketing getting a proper market yeah. these are the three challenges to face with any organic farm independent okay sir so as per concerned with the zero budget or the subhas palika natural farming or organic farming Uh, which uh, um, among these both, which will you suggest to the farmers or our participants to go for? Uh, go for the organic farming, but try to see that you are producing your own input. That is the advantage. If you are able to produce your own, which has got the certification, then you will be able to get it certified easily. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, one side our government is promoting the organic farming, the natural farming, and other. Uh, and on the other hand, we are just uh, going ahead with the technology. They are just making the national policy for the drones and for the robots and everything. So, uh, how do you see this picture? There is no conflict between the drones and the uh, technological uh, innovations and the organic farming. Both can exist each other because. Complement each other actually. I will. Say. If you have to apply the organic for um, inputs, that has to, can be applied through the drones. That can be applied through the machinery. That need to be because we don't have that much manpower, which will be working in the agriculture. In agriculture, the major problem you go to any farmer, he will say, "Okay, sir, labor me." So that's one of the thing which you will find always. The, uh, uh, there is no contradiction between the two. Both can exist. To, both are actually complement each other. Yes, sir. Sir, one of uh, one of our participant has asked that as an agricultural student, how we can spread awareness about the water logging or about the soil health among farmers. So, how we can just motivate them and how we can just aware them about the health of their uh, soils. Uh, And the uh, problem of water logging in their field. The most of the period time when we talk about the for with the farmers, we have got now the soil health card, which uh, gives an information that how the soil health is, as we see our own health and different parameters. So, so different parameters have to be shown that this is the parameter where your soil is deteriorating in different years. So you have care of that. As a water logging, he himself sees that water logging is there. There is no need to say much. If it is in the northern India, where the it is problem of mainly the water logging of the the root zone, 
and they're the profit starts delivering them. So he knows much better than you know. The only thing we have to tell him don't over irrigate, use efficient irrigation, use less water so that the water level is down and it's gone. Okay? In the eastern region, you have to say that you drain the water as much as possible and don't allow the outside water to. Yes, sir. Thank, thank, thank you so much, sir. And uh, the uh, one question which I want to ask from my side that uh, we all know that every year our agriculture is facing so many problems. Like sometimes the uh, winter is very, very severe. Sometimes the summers are very, very hot. So in this extreme temperature, we are uh, we just cannot um, we just cannot predict that what is going to happen. Like what are the problems uh, which we are going to face? like about the attack of diseases, attack of the pest. We don't know about anything. So how the farmer, uh, how the Indian farmer can uh, can go with that and or how we uh, as agriculture professional, how we can just guide the farmers about all these things because cl uh, climate change is real and it, we are all just observing this. The key word is diversity. It's just like when you work, you keep in your place so that there are no uh, this your diversion. Uh, if something fails, you are able to follow up on the others. Same with the, with the crop also. If one crop fails, another crop is there to fall. So that diversification has to be there, both cereal crops, vegetables, fruits, animals, that you have to make the right combination so that if something fails, if it is too hot, so one type of the crop will fail, but the other type of the crop will survive. So you will get some. If it is too cold, one that type of the crop will fail, but other type of the crop will survive. So you have to diversify and have a mix of different enterprises. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh... And uh, you have uh, mentioned about uh, banana peel in your uh, lecture. So uh, the uh, one of our participants has not asked banana you, peel, but banana pseudo is not yeah, so, yeah, so, so they have asked you about the uh, benefits and how they can just utilize it uh, and how they can go uh, and use it for their... Uh, so that, that requires a long speech. Uh, so better you, uh, my mail ID is there. With you, you can send a mail and I will ask the concerned person to send. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So uh, it is uh, such an insightful session, and we are done with the questions. And we, as a team, uh, we are very uh, grateful to you for uh, uh, coming and uh, and interacting with the participants. So thank you, much, sir. We seek your blessings, and we uh, just hope to meet you very soon. Thank you. So well, thank you a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity to interact with you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, participant, for the next uh, session, we are going with the next guest. And uh, for the next session, I would like to I would like to hand over the uh, this uh, virtual podium to Dr. Utkarsha. And uh, we are just uh, once the guest is going to join, we are going to continue with the session. Hi, Imani. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. So, uh, for the next session, I'm just uh, handing over the virtual podium to Dr. Utkarsha. Uh, Ma'am, are you there? So, wait for a minute.
you're waiting. Uh, Utkarsha, ma'am, are you there? Uh, so till then, you can share your screen if you have your presentation. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll do that. So um, I see a good number of participants. Uh, good evening, everyone. I think it's 639 is the number I see. Quite a good number of uh, attendees. Uh, my host uh, has disabled my screen sharing. So I request uh, if somebody could uh, enable. I'm not able to share my um, slides. Uh, okay, sir. So, due to some reason, Dr. Utkarsha is not here. So, I am continuing with the session. Okay. So, I just <clears throat> there's some uh, technical problem on her end. So, I am just continuing with the session. So, thank you so much, sir, for uh, joining. And uh, we are so grateful to you that you have joined us. And uh, <clears throat> so, first of all, I just want to uh, uh, briefly introduce her to the participants so that they can know about you and. The, you must uh, they so uh, doctor sorry so uh, so dr nilabhi samantre is a keynote speaker he is a head of data science and artificial intelligence as he is an associate vice president and head at csm technology specialization in data science and artificial intelligence before um, before this he was head of emerging technologies and he has a huge experience of more than 13 Years at IBM as an IBM practice area leader and a artificial intelligence practice head. He had also worked as a division, uh, division head at IBM Global Delivery Technology Assembly Center. And uh, Sir has uh, worked in many of the other reputed companies. So, <clears throat> Sir is an expert in uh, data science and artificial intelligence. So, uh, Sir, I think our participants are going to learn a lot from you about data science and artificial artificial intelligence. So, so the virtual podium is all yours, Sir. And uh, thank you so much for joining. So, over to you, Sir. Uh, thank you very much, Mani. Uh, that was quite an introduction. Uh, uh, Himani, I am still not able to share the screen. It says host has not uh, has disabled participant sharing uh, screen sharing. So, sir, our team is checking the sir, sir, now I have made you the co-host. You can share your screen. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, yes, now it works. So, um, since uh, so, I will not be teaching analytics and artificial uh, intelligence in this session. Uh, since we are talking about agriculture, so we will talk about uh, uh, one of the agro tech analytic solutions that was, uh, it was conceptualized by the organization that currently I belong to, and then we'll take forward from there. So uh, before I start, um, uh, just a brief about myself, I think it's already told by Himani. I was, uh, uh, I was, uh, I have been with uh, CSM Technologies. Um, prior to this, uh, till 2018, I was with IBM. Uh, and uh, uh, so sorry to interrupt you. Kindly uh, make sure the screen is uh, full screen mode. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. I I guess this is better. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Sir, this is okay. So yeah, now, so I was saying I was with uh, IBM before uh, CSN, uh, and uh, prior to IBM, I was uh, working with uh, Satyam, uh, which eventually became Tech Mahindra. And prior to that, I was with Agilent and Hewlett Packard, that is Agilent Technologies of uh, spin up of HP. Um, so I have uh, worked in different uh, places, uh, different organizations. Uh, this is a brief about me. Now coming back to uh, my organization, which is uh, called CSM Technologies. Uh, I'm based out of Bhubaneswar, Odisha. Though we are uh, we are spanned across different places. We have an upcoming slide which we'll talk about. So um, today's content we will talk uh, about since we are talking about agriculture here. So we talk about uh, understand what's the India's food security issues, and we'll have a use case, a case study of Odisha's example. 
uh, that is the, the kind of intervention we did because of uh, the, the different challenges we faced and how analytics was brought in and what was the impact or the tech intervention impact uh, based on our solution. This is uh, uh, the organization that I belong to is called CSM. Uh, some, uh, it's a 23-year-old uh, company. When it got started, it was called Cybertech Software and Multimedia. Then eventually it became only CSM. So today we are CSM Tech. Uh, 23 years old, 1,000 plus employees, 40 plus national and state level awards and international awards. And uh, we have 55 plus national and subnational clients. Four domains, uh, eGov or uh, uh, we do mostly, we work for the government organizations, uh, the union government and the state government, uh, or in uh, places like uh, we work in Asia, India, Africa, North America, Middle East. So both for federal government and the state government. Um, we do touch millions of life on a daily basis. So our key... Uh, we talk about agriculture. So apart from agriculture, we are in a lot of other sectors as well. Like we are in mining, education, but here we talk about agri. Uh, 10 years we have been into the agri domain. Uh, we have 10 plus awards, uh, food supply, uh, agri related, and uh, there are other major domain options. So we, we will not elongate much on uh, the other domains, but here, yes, uh, we have expertise in infrastructure management, uh, creating bespoke applications, IoT solutions, uh, mobile applications, uh, and of course, analytics, AI, and other emerging technologies, which we have used. We, we did use even AR, VR, uh, RPA, blockchain, and other uh, tech, uh, emerging technologies within our scope of projects. Um, our global library uh, folio, that's, uh, uh, we, are, we have done a lot of projects around unified farmer registration, seed certification, early warning systems, soil information systems, uh, agri procurement system, public distribution automation systems, food safety and other things. We worked with a couple of uh, projects. Few of the uh, projects that we did was with Kenya, Kenya government, Ministry of Agriculture, Odisha, Bihar Livelihood Missions, uh, Department of Food, Trademark, so a couple of them. So now uh, we'll uh, Let's understand what's India's food trend, and then we'll see uh, once we understand the the food trends, the food security uh, issues, and other things. Then we will move into how technology intervention helps here, how analytics and artificial intelligence and satellite imagery was brought into the specific challenges that we faced. So, what does India produce? We produce. 122 million metric tons of rice, 109 million metric tons of wheat. Of course, there are other core cereals and maize, that is 50, 30 uh, respectively million metric tons. There are a lot of other uh, food grains that we produce. It is, these are on the higher side, so we are just showing that. And what do we procure? So we procure 60 million metric tons of rice uh, and as well as wheat. We do procure that, though we, we do produce, we also procure. And then there is some core cereal we produce, uh, procure, not much, very less, but pulses also we do procure. Where, where does uh, our uh, budget is spent on or uh, the GDP is spent on? The Indian is spent on almost uh, 5 lakh crore in defense, 1.7 lakh crore in uh, railways. Uh, 2.56 lakh crore in food and public distribution system. So this, this is the second highest area after defense. Defense being 4.18 lakh crore and food and public distribution 2.56 lakh crore is where it is spent. So why spend so much on food? If you look the 2021 ranking, India still is at 101 out of the 116, uh, you know, uh, the global hunger index, that's what they call. Agriculture, uh, it's a GDP contribution is 20 percent, which is a significantly high GDP contribution. This is for the financial year 2021. That was 20 percent. Farm income. Uh, so income was around. Uh, if you look at the total uh, income, it, it's 1.2 lakh crore in 2019. That was the last uh, generated figures. A minimum support price uh, of staples like paddy is higher than market price. So that's what uh, it's. You know, that's why we spend so much on food uh, from a government perspective, because MSP is higher than the market price. 
So government has to spend there as well as significant amount. And we'll slowly see how that gets correlated. Okay. Uh, so understanding the procurement cycle or the public distribution cycle, how it how uh, a farmer's paddy produce reaches the average Indian's plate via public distribution system. So this is the entire process that we see here. Uh, you know, uh, so timelines of public distribution system. We it all started in the 40s and 60s, and uh, it was uh, revamped in the 90s. Uh, wherein the revamped PDS launched rather than the streamlined PDS, and then in '97 the targeted PDS launched with focus on poor or below poverty line. National Food Security Act for near universal food coverage was done in 2013. So that's the timeline, and uh, this is how uh, the food comes to the plate. Your plate, farm, uh, farmer produces, then which, which goes into uh, uh, things like women's self help groups and uh, PPN, PACS, rice mills, then rice producers, and then um, it goes to the godowns and then uh, uh, different uh, other bodies and schools and uh, other welfare schemes, it is passed on. That is how it, it happens. The complete flowchart is out there. So, if you, uh, this is how we link the produce with uh, the distribution system. So um, MSP is the government's assurance of procurement that uh, so, uh, the, uh, at this point of time, uh, government does an assurance of whatever is the cost of production. Uh, it's uh, it, accordingly, it provides M and MSP is decided by the government. And uh, when we want to link produce with this distribution, then there is Government of India subsidy on procuring seeds, Government of India subsidy on procuring fertilizers. There is lower 0% uh, uh, farm loans are there, uh, interest rates are very less, crop insurance is there, crop procurement through MSPs happens, and then finally it goes to the public distribution system. So this is how the distribution system is linked throughout from MSP, seeds, fertilizers, farms, crops to the PDS. So we have a problem of plenty in India at this point of time from a paddy perspective. If we look at it, the major challenges, uh, for example, Odisha itself was a, uh, at this point of time, it is a paddy surplus state and it was a, a paddy deficit state at one point of time. And the same story is for most of the states in India at this point of time. What are the major challenges for food security? Procurement goes and MSP, uh, the minimum, uh, you know, uh, price that the government has fixed and um, modern and scientific storage. So there is not enough modern scientific storage for a long term storage because it comes very expensive for a uh, penny to be stored for a long term in most part of the climate changes happens. And uh, there is not enough uh, lack uh, or there is a lack of crop diversity. There is not enough diversity. The top challenges of procurement are land parcel anomalies like uh, uh, gap between registered lands or registered data and the reality, whether they are cropland or not. So it's like uh, that could be some anomalies. People could, uh, farmers could declare a land which is not really a farmland as a farmland and show some produce from there for because MSP is higher than the market rate. So they can make some money out there. So such kind of fraudulent activity does happen. Fraudulent procurement, lack of yield analysis, underestimation of produce or lack of platform for crop analysis. So a lot of uh, such anomalies does happen. Um, India's twist with MSP. So the minimum support price was uh, root, uh, rooted in 1997. Uh, so I think a lot of people are waiting in the waiting room. Let me just admit them. Just give me a minute. Um, I see people waiting there. Uh, so I just admit them. Just give me a minute. Um, admit all. I admit all of them. So it's, it's keep popping me that people are waiting. Okay, there are a lot of other people waiting. Okay, um, I admit them. All right. Okay. Okay, so I have admitted the people. Thanks uh, for this. All right. Um, yeah, back to. Uh, the India space with MSP, the idea of minimum support price was rooted or mooted in 66-67. Uh, 
to incentivize farmers. Here is the brief timeline. 1964 is when it was done, and uh, it was uh, in 1990 that C. H. Hanuman Rao report was released, and uh, uh, you, you would have, uh, if you, if all of us remember, uh, of course, we all of us are aware of uh, the the farmers' protest which has happened, which and one of the demand key demands was the MSP guarantee as part of the demand during the farmer protest. The finance minister has had announced in 2018 that the MSP and Kharif crops will be 50 percent more than the production cost. So that is one of the driving factors, and that is the reason why MSP has become uh, the price is more than the market price. Um, and rice is part of the kharif, uh, uh, you know, considering kharif and rabi crops if we uh, categorize in India. So the turnaround story, uh, Odisha's turnaround, so the example, the use case here is Odisha story. So uh, Odisha became a, a decentralized state uh, in kharif, uh, for kharif in 2003 and 4. Uh, so over the last two decades, the state has gone from deficit to surplus state for paddy, as I said. This is the fourth largest contributor of paddy in the country. And direct income worth is 8,300 crores. That is uh, for 12.59 lakh registered farmers. Uh, this is the third largest contributor to public distribution system, catering to almost 70% of the state's population. That's uh, some. Yeah, these are the different awards that was given. Uh, Technologies Award, Billion uh, Award, Asia, WFP. Uh, Odisha's IT challenges in uh, 2020, the authentication. So, so challenges were while registered data is a robust database. Of course, that we do have a database. It has no way to predict individual outcomes of farmer's yield or its veracity. Verification and validation. Field operatives can often return erratic data in surveys without a mechanism to control margin volume of error. So that could be error by the field operatives. And there could also be some, um, you know, that there could be something which fraudulent activity also there, out there. So. Uh, that has to be sky, uh, eye from sky, and there was no visual platform as such. So visualization or no platform visualize yield or registered registration patterns, uh, which makes it tough to uh, you know detect anomalies in reported field or land registration. So we need a, a very robust visualization platform which will enable reported yield versus the land registration correlation. So uh, that, that's called a crop one solution from uh, CSM, uh, my organization. So um, all right, uh, introduction to uh, crop one. So this is um, designed for, for centralized crop procurement system as well as decentralized. Uh, it has uh, basically this uh, crop one aggregates the visualizes visualization and analyzes the data that is captured through agricultural seasons to uh, it has a decent support system in place it processes the, the satellite imageries or high resolution satellite images it has a field survey mobile app which correlates with what is captured in through the hr si or the satellite images the field survey mobile app is also developed by us which ensures that whatever is seen or alerted through the satellites images is revalidated with a mobile app which has a geofencing to ensure it is done in a real time with real time uh, timestamps and uh, the geo coordinates at this point of time. And of course, there are analytical dashboards that shows what has happened. Prop one is now implemented in 19 districts of Odisha, where the government of Odisha procures paddy from the farmers. It works in tandem with the acclaimed paddy procurement uh, automation system. That is PPAS, that is what we call. See uh, more people waiting to be admitted. Let me just admit them. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, the main features of uh, PADI1 are it's the data sanitization of farmer is being done here. So uh, that could be some. Uh, incorrect entries or fraudulent entries. So those kind of sanitization is done. Validation of ROR and KISM, what kind of KISM of uh, uh, land is that, tenancy, Geo geofencing of digital cadastral is done, linking of farmer reporting, identification of missing cadastral for need of subdivision. Um, 
it also uh, as part of the solution it is found which are non crop areas which is declared as crop area but on ground they are non crop it could be a pond it could be a, a barren piece of land and declared as a paddy field so those kind of things are also being processed here so uh, we uh, based the based on the boundary we do that for district boundaries then uh, the tehsil boundaries villages reported plots and uh, so that and based on which an alert is generated as a valid plot or a, a suspected plot or invalid plot or doubt paddy so those kind of suspect is also done So high resolution satellite images so via satellite so as you can see on the right hand side they are the satellite images and the integration of planet scope uh, 3mmx images and hs hrsr mh and ds geodb application of artificial intelligence logic uh, past reporting status versus uh, non crop areas the image processing was done uh, paddy crop identification was done using different uh, machine learning models supervised classification models were used for the same uh, if there were in case of there was some ambiguity because it could be a cloudy uh, you know the images could cover certain uh, fields because of cloud or other things that was taken care of uh, gis processing was done flagging of doubtful plots uh, and generation of validated cropland was done as part of the first uh, round after the satellite imagery was done uh, a mobile app was developed as you can see on the right hand side so uh, this uh, the major features which it had was dashboard with information on the total number of farmers registered land details validated number of lands and other things were available there the app designed for field verification by assistant registrar of cooperative societies and deputy registrar of cooperative societies uh, so this, this the design was done by the field uh, for field verification by uh, arcs and drscs and then we developed that mobile app uh so it displays the list of withheld plots uh the physically the officer or the uh, review inspector uh, goes and, and navigates to the plot verification uh, is done using the camera of the mobile app crop and non crop status approval of the verified plots is then done by rcs and drcs so the time stamp with the uh, geo fencing and at uh, the uh, geo coordinates at that point of time is real time uh, on the server so it is full proof that where it is taken so that is uh, the mobile app revalidates whatever are the suspect plants and the images so it's a 12 validation one is the eye on the sky that is the satellite images then for the doubtful cases there is a field verification using the mobile app uh, so uh, so the web gis analytical dashboard farmer station like uh, the kind of things that you do is Uh, farm registration by district block society villages growth of the registered farmer how many how much what was the percentage of registered farmers growth so if there is any anomaly or if the pattern or the trend drastically changes then that is one of uh, uh, alerts that is generated that there is something which has to be looked into so it could be genuine uh, registration uh, registered farmers growth or decline but uh, you can look into that district wise new farmer registration how many new farmer were registered farmer versus share cropper ratio so share cropper if they suddenly increase uh, versus farmer or vice versa then uh, what are the farmer dropout status kism wise land ratio so in previous year if there was a different kism and this year there is a different kism for the same piece of land then uh, you, you it can happen but uh, you you have to look into that so what has happened uh, so that can be one of the identification farmer type wise so what kind of farmer uh, the registration was done how many uh, say members of a single family were registered maybe a particular piece of land a plot was registered by one farmer the next following year it was registered by three farmers it could happen it could be a genuine case or it could be a case where the same uh, uh, you know set of paddy is being sold by multiple people uh, uh, from the same family or uh, uh, so that is something to be uh, that has needs to be validated purchase center or ppc registration with the land identification so trend analysis has to be done in the ppc wise uh, paddy procurement quantity prediction target versus achieved miller engagement and change in society in paddy procurement growth relationship that has to be uh, seen so um, we move on uh, 
So this is one of the examples uh, or the sample illustration. Uh, so what we see here is that uh, there are there are it, different color coded or the color coding is primarily to see what are uh, you know the, the suspect lands and what are uh, the non suspect lands if there is change in reporting change in uh, uh, change in say the total number of uh, irrigated land or the farmer district change or the growth of land area or uh, there is a, a land kism change those kind of uh, indications so, um, so based on that it, it is a different color coded is there suspicious land is code there is a scoring given so total number of plots for example on the right hand side you can see the plots are you know one 1997 plots uh, which was suspect and the plot uh, and the number of farmers were 2000 plus farmers that were in suspect so this kind of suspicious land uh, reporting indications is done and the color coding is done for the same so it requirements is there is a cadastral mapping that has to be done digital farmer registration that is to be done uh, procurement automation to be done and what we have done is uh, in Odisha, we did farmer registration, paddy procurement automation, and then of course, Bullock and ORSAC, that is the uh, satellite imageries uh, the, uh, that we procure from the ORSAC uh, as an organization. So uh, when we implemented this, uh, there was also a lot, of, it was in the public domain, it was in the media news, the food supply minister had said, uh, 26,000 uh, such false entries were found for paddy procurement in Odisha. Let me just admit some people. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, so. Um, this was covered in uh, the TV news, uh, the original news uh, for OTV. Then there are uh, there were some places as forest and bushes, and this was declared as a paddy procurement. So this was also covered in, in the TV uh, news, and of course there was uh, the Indian Express and other uh, uh, websites and newspapers. They found that ponds and forests shown as farmlands. So a, we did satellite imagery solution to find the genuine paddy cultivators who are the genuine ones. It was also in the news, fake farmers in Odisha caught by remote sensing application. So this was what our report sensing app, app had uh, as an outcome we had done. So these are uh, the actual analytics the, that we did. So as you can see, uh, district wise uh, statistics was generated. Uh, let me just uh, you know, get these people, uh, uh, some are waiting to admit all. Okay. All right. Uh, so. Um, the statistics the total number of reported plots uh, 25 lakh uh, plots were reported and then there was uh, the reported area was 18 lakh acres was the area registered farmer were 15 lakhs paddy yield if you look at metric ton then 27 lakh metric ton was the paddy yield and uh, if we look at the it was 5384 uh, crore uh, that was the kind of uh, Money. So reported farmers by irrigation source, uh, there were like, as you can see, the segregation done here, irrigated versus non irrigated reported farmers by relation, share proper versus owner, 94% were owner, owners, 87% were male. So these are the kind of uh, segregation that was done. This is not moving, just give me a minute, all right. Yeah, so, uh, the value of uh, paddy uh, 5000 crore. Uh, this was the statistics at a high level. We move on. Okay. Go to the next page. Continuous uh, rate is popping up for equity. Okay. Yeah, all right. So, um, So um, we spoke about it. The suspected plots were eight lakh uh, ninety thousand plots were suspected plots. Um, out of a twenty five lakh plot, plot that was uh, pretty high in number. Total area of suspected plots was uh, you know it was seven lakh acres were 
total suspected area associated farmers uh, were 269000 farmers paddy yield in metric ton 14 lakh metric ton and notional loss at this point of time was 2700 crores that was a notional loss uh, before we actually did a validation and uh, that was a high level analytics that was done and uh, then uh, we did uh, further analysis and uh, went into after the nine uh, high level uh, statistics we got into the analytics part of it okay uh, analytics yeah so um, then we did the uh, optical images what we did is uh, out of the suspected plot, we uh, we validated the image processing was done on on all the images that was captured from satellite. Uh, we did a processing of the same using AIML and and the visualization was done using Tableau, and we did some machine learning algorithms we wrote, and we tried to map that with the actual images, and what we found was suspected plots number was one lakh uh, plus. Area was forty nine thousand acres, more than forty nine thousand acres. Suspected farmer was eight thousand farmers. Paddy yield was 74,000 and uh, there were uh, notional loss was 144 crore uh, of uh, government. Uh, it was it was lost to the government of 144 crores. This is what we did in the in the first uh, round of our uh, validation. So it was for seven districts. So initially we did that for seven districts and eventually it was done for all. So from the seven districts, it was it came to around 140 crores uh, out of the 21 districts uh, that comprises the Pudisa. So this were uh, the seven districts are Bar uh, Bargad, Bolangi, Kalahandi, Korapur, Noapada, Sambalpur, and uh, Subhanpur. These were the ones which were initially uh, the the actual uh, initial initial POC was done, uh, which uh, with the real data, and then it was uh, taken up for the rest of the district. So as, as for the field result, once uh, the as I said, once the image processing was done, the optical images were taken, and the suspects were around. 44 crore was, I'm uh, sorry, 144 crore of uh, rupees was uh, misreported was what was coming out uh, from the false uh, declaration. Uh, when we did a field uh, result, uh, as you can see the, from the suspected plot of 1 lakh, 83,000 came out to be the misreported plots. From an area of suspected plots of 49,000 acres, 38,000 actually came out to be misreported. So associated farmers of 68,000, 57,000 uh, on ground came out to be fraudulent uh, or declaring it incorrectly. Paddy yield of 74,000 uh, metric ton. Actually, it was 57,000, which was reported, misreported. And the actual loss was uh, 111 crores. So this is pretty close. So the suspect versus the actuals really mapped up. So what we saw from the sky, uh, you know, IE from the sky, uh, and we did our image processing and analytics and AI. Uh, on ground, when the field survey was done, uh, it turned out to be almost uh, very close to what we saw from the you know uh, eye from the sky. So this is a, a tech intervention where we were able to save uh, money for the uh, government and the, the genuine farmers. They benefited what they are supposed to do for, for taking the benefits of MSP and not uh, the fraudulent ones. So um, field survey report, of course, this was the final field survey report, which uh, uh, you know field survey misreported. Plots were 5,585 plots were misreported, uh, resulting in actual loss of 111.5 crore for the government, uh, which was actually just going to the fraudulent people. So uh, this is what was done. And these are the actual images that we took. And then uh, once we did the image processing, the red ones are the ones which were the uh, no paddy crop. They were no paddy at all. They were on some ponds or the barren piece of land or just bushes. And then the orange one or the doubt cases and paddy existed in the green ones. So, uh, of course, there are genuine people, genuine crops is happening. But yes, there, there, is, there are always bad fish in a, a pond. So, uh, tech intervention should address it so that uh, the right people get the benefits. The KPI results are the key performance indicators that we uh, came out with. Um, it was the 82 percent of field verification uh, overlapped with what was the suspect so uh, uh, you can see uh, you know valid paddy were uh, from from the suspects uh, the valid paddy came out to be 16 percent remaining was actually no no paddy land at all uh, it was uh, misreporting and misreporting by gender if you say that uh, uh, women are always more honest than men so women the misreporting was much less nine percent less than ten percent 
and when uh, when 90 percent were misreported uh, so uh, gender wise also okay misreporting by farmer share copper versus owner owner misreported more so yeah impact of odisha's uh, crop pilot uh, seven districts it was done as i said we we are just showing the pilot of the seven districts the rest all is also done wrong but this uh, if i use those seven districts and um, 25 lakh registered plots were there, suspect plots were 1 lakh, surveyed suspect plots is 1 lakh, close to 1 lakh, and then the surveyed non paddy plots get turned out to be 85,000. Loss, uh, uh, you know, in current stop that the government was able to stop and take necessary action immediately was 111 crores of. So, uh, and of course, because of uh, this, there were also, uh, this created a fear among the fraudulent one and there was a lot of them who, who had misreported, they also corrected their uh, registration details. Uh, and of course, uh, if we look at it, that then uh, the MSP amount saved is huge for the state. So this is um, about uh, the use case that was implemented in uh, Odisha. And uh, that has also generated a lot of interest in other states who want to replicate the same solution. Jai Jawan, Jai Kishan, uh, which is Jo uh, Hamara Naratha, Green Revolution, mein, it's still valid. Uh, India will grow when our farmers are empowered. For that to happen, we must find ways to champion eligible farmers and root out the rough elements. Very true. Uh, with uh, that note, I think uh, I'm done. Uh, so I'm open to any questions. And Jai Jawan, Jai Kishan, Jai Hind. Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, Mani, I am uh, done with the presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, it was uh, indeed a very wonderful session. And uh, we have some questions from the participants. So with your due permission, I just want to ask the questions. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, yes, sir. So, uh, sir, uh, as you know that the, most of the farmers in India are not much educated. Now the emerging entrepreneurs or agripreneurs, they are educated, they are agriculture graduates, but the old farmers, they are not that much educated. So what do you think, how they can go for AI and geofencing in their fields? Uh, is this a community-based approach or we can just go with the individual farmer, like they don't know the use of technology and apps and mobile, uh, mobile apps. So uh, how do you see it? Yeah, so uh, uh, Himari, uh, I think the question was from Subham. Subham, this uh, this is not for, uh, this uh, technical intervention is not impacting the farmers. They don't have to understand the AAML. Uh, they don't have to understand uh, how the AAML works. So this is for the government intervention. This is to ensure that the genuine farmers, they get uh, what they are supposed to get as part of the MSP. But the ones who are not genuine farmers, who uh, declare or uh, misdeclare, misrepresent their lands or their status as a farmer, uh, they, they will be questioned by the government. So uh, this uh, geo-satellite images uh, and the field verification is not done by the farmers. It is being done by the government, the state government. They will have uh, the tools in place, the mobile apps in place, and their revenue, their uh, field inspectors, they will take the mobile app. And of course, the image uh, processing from the satellites is being done by a system integrator like us just like we are CSM, so uh, uh, one of the agencies which the government will decide or the government can do it themselves, uh, they can do that. So what we have done. So. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, you have uh, shown so much data in your PPT and uh, the data is very well represented. So uh, this data is from the Odisha uh, state or from the entire India? That is, uh, the use case was only from Odisha. So uh, the, the, it is the same problem across India as i said many state are uh, paddy surplus at this point of time and the more or less the same problem happens in every state but this is a use case so use case is just a citation or a case study so this is the case study of odisha but applicable to india okay sir so uh, your organization is working in odisha only or the or in you have different branches in india other parts of india yeah we work across different parts of india we work in uh, odisha bihar jharkhand chhattisgarh punjab Karnataka, uh, Tamil Nadu, Delhi, uh, then Middle East, uh, Dubai, uh, Africa, seven, eight countries, um, Seattle. Uh, in fact, last month I, I was in, uh, in Seattle itself. I was in New Jersey. So we, we work across uh, different places in India, Middle East, Africa, North America. Uh, mostly we are in India. So we are India-based company. 
our headquarters is in bhubaneswar but yes we have offices in different places okay okay so that's very nice uh, sir uh, one question is from the participants like what are the career opportunities as a data scientist in agriculture uh, uh, so uh, as as a career in data scientist uh, is very bright whether it is agriculture or it's uh, you know education it is mines and minerals it is bank everywhere because uh, as the, as the saying goes uh, data is the new fuel okay so uh, the the uh, the world today is uh, rich on information and there are billions and trillions of data being produced by devices every second across the country and to create sense out of that to make or use those information so it's like data creates information information creates knowledge knowledge creates wisdom so we have to apply that data and in a scientific manner using different algorithms for the benefit of the mankind for the benefit of uh, specific problem statements so data science definitely as as you saw the second highest investment is in the food apart from defense so when there is such a huge investment as a data scientist there are a lot of scope where you can implement your knowledge to optimize different so as an example i've just given example with uh, image processing you can also know uh, you can also find out how much is uh, the actual uh, humidity or how much is on the ground how much water is there uh, from the images itself so there are always different applications whether you are using uh, blockchain using data science ai everywhere in the food so i, I think it's a bright future there yes uh, indeed uh, there is bright future in data science but uh, can you please tell our participants about the some institutes where, where they can uh, pursue their career in uh, data science uh, there is are there any institutes which are working in data uh, agriculture data science or uh, do you have any idea about this please enlighten our participants about this yeah so um, data science there there are uh, so almost all colleges whether uh, they are engineering colleges or they are you know on uh, higher studies masters or or they are some institutes they are all providing uh, data science uh, courses whether it is uh, you know master in data science uh, msc in data science or mtech in data science so uh, there are full time courses and uh, even in mba in data science these days you are getting or if they are online courses so since ugc has made online uh, also being recognized across so in case uh, you know it's not a bad idea if somebody who really wants to pursue data science and you are a graduate you can always do a mtech in data science say from bits pilani it's a online course uh, similarly just like bits pilani mtech in data science there are msc from chandigarh chandigarh university they provide msc in data science and of course there are uh, other universities in northeast who provide uh, there are few in tamil nadu so that there is no dearth of universities who provide master in data science either as an msc or as an mtech so that is for masters but if somebody is at an entry level even at a bachelors you can do data science and data science will be is going to be here to stay so it's not a uh, it's not going to vanish away anywhere soon because uh, everything that works uh, in the modern world the basic is the base is data so even if you have artificial intelligence if you have you have alexa or a google home or whatever you have everything works on the data the machine learning it learns from the data so it improvises on data the you know the uh, just like tesla the car which is the driverless car it keeps learning from the data so it has eight cameras it has machine learning algorithms like deep learning or they call it dl okay so uh, dl is a subset of ml ml is a subset of ai so uh, in deep learning with eight cameras uh, it knows where to stop with the red light how to go if a human being crosses the road then it will automatically stop so all this is fed into it but it's a deep learning so it will learn on, on its own for example if you throw a stone at it the first time it may not uh, do anything and the glass might break but the second time when the car goes it will learn automatically and it will stop before the stone hits it so that is also self learning so how does it learn through the data so what happened is the earlier time when the camera saw something coming from the air and it did not stop the glass broke so it learns it from that data and then it improvises next time you throw a stone it will not hit the car so that is again data so everything is data today whether it is uh, medical science banking 
or agriculture so data is going to stay yes sir sir uh, one other question from a participant that uh, all we all know that odisha face, uh, face the most hazard uh, hazardous climatic conditions and every year cyclone strikes there so um, she wants to know that how this technology work in odisha see you will be surprised uh, though uh, the, uh, it's uh, odisha is the state which has learnt uh, you know as say you can break it once but you can't break it again in 1998 there was a super cyclone sorry in 1999 and that was a devastation and there were thousands of lives which was lost but odisha learned from it after that there have been many cyclones and this is one of the best uh, you know way how it has managed uh, because i stay here so i i i uh, now over the last two years i have been odisha before that uh, like i was in different other places uh, but yes what i see here is that the government is very proactive they use all the uh, you know information that is brought in much before the actual cyclone comes in from the hitting on the seashore there is evacuations that happens there is uh, information passed on in every media whether it is a print media it is a tv it, it is a youtube it is channel it is news it is radio so information is passed on to everyone both physical and technological intervention is done to ensure evacuation is done on time and all precautions are taken and the motto is zero deaths or or every life is precious and and if you have seen the previous uh, you know three four cyclones uh, odisha has done a great job uh, there was no loss of life yeah, or very minimal uh, because of some other reasons yes sir sir another question we uh, i have from participant is that that how much a farmer need to uh, pay to avail the services from your organization see a farmer has to pay zero because farmer is not going to pay anything from our organization nor to the government it is the government which has uh, which will pay uh, to uh, organization like us uh, uh, or or some other organization who are who bring in the technology intervention to ensure that uh, and that is minimal that that payment is would be quite minimal that to the kind of benefit that the government reaps of that out of that intervention of course government can do it on their own as well without any agency but the idea is the government spends to ensure that the right people they get the right benefit and the fraudulent uh, farmers they don't get the benefit the good farmers uh, which are uh, the chunk of uh, the population they get the right so it's like um, you know uh, cheating is not allowed uh, so that's what this intervention brings in those who have studied very hard Uh, they will pass, uh, and those who have not studied cheating is not allowed. So that's what it says. Yes, sir. Sir, another question is: uh, there is a statement that artificial uh, intelligence intelligence is uh, cost effective and it saves the money. So, uh, how uh, do you do you see it? How you you are going to explain it? That uh, is it true or uh, not? Uh, sorry imani I, i missed the question what was the question so there is a question that uh, artificial intelligence it saves the cost it is cost effective and it saves the money so what are your views about this statement yes uh, artificial intelligence definitely saves the cost and there are different ways of uh, putting it the best example was what we did in the agri uh, field for seven districts we saved 111 uh, crores of government money uh, that was just an example but more than that uh, ai will save a lot of other cost everywhere like uh, you know ai robotic process automation is another form of ai uh, what rpa does is uh, whatever is the repeat kind of it uh, you know uh, the form or processes it automates it so uh, contrary to what people think is more automation loss of job no more automation more jobs so uh, 20 years back people used to think uh, that if there are the computers will come people will not get jobs the but the highest number of jobs were created by computers so uh, it's just that the the kind of pe- work people do will change so ai will not take take away human jobs human will get uh, you know go move up on the value chain and uh, do uh, new high end jobs they they will create the designs they will tell the computers what to do so uh, ai will not take away jobs but yes it will create a lot of jobs sir one of our participant is asking that uh, the uh, that whether the farmers of odisha are getting real benefits of msp or not 
yeah of course uh, uh, i think uh, everybody is getting the benefits uh, why the stories are everybody gets the benefits just uh, it's just uh, ensuring that uh, the uh, it goes to the right people that's what uh, government wants to do that it goes to the right people okay and that there is no fraudulent uh, declaration of land or uh, the farmer kinds what that's what it says Yes, sir. And there is another question that for the measurement of farmers' land still in 2022, the instrument and techniques used by the Patwari and others are traditional in nature, and they are still not using geo satellite instrument. So, due to which there are still lots of chances of wrong measurements. So, uh, kindly express your views on this. Yes. So, uh, it, it differs from state to state, and more and more the states. When I say state, state. can be just like odisha there are states punjab karnataka haryana uh, uttar pradesh uh, tamil nadu kerala so with gujarat uh, mizoram so more and more state should bring in technology intervention and it is the government who have to bring it in so uh, they bring in more technology intervention there will be less corruption and more people will benefit the farmer will benefit more by technology intervention the government has to bring in that once government brings it of course the uh, government is doing lot lot more than what people really think and every state government does it the way government has adopted technology it is phenomenal in india i think the, the government in india have been doing a fantastic job if we look at the transition of the last 20 20 years not many countries have done what india has done and and phenomenal i mean apart from whatever the media does uh, you know uh, dissection and all that but Uh, the indian governments have done fantastic job whether it is state governments or the central government they have done phenomenal job the state where i stay odisha the government has so i am not a party guy but i am just telling they have done a fantastic job if we look at the turnaround stories of every state every single state of india it is fantastic and the best part was they all embraced technology nobody was shy away from shying away from technology every single government was accepting technology and all emerging technologies are in government that is the surprise part in fact in india there are a lot of uh, enterprises who are slower than government government is accepting adopting technologies whether it is you know ai ml blockchain rpa even metaverse now government is ready to accept metaverse they are uh, challenging the enterprises government is pretty ahead in times so that's that's a great news for all of us of course Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Indeed. Uh, sir, how artificial intelligence works on the prediction of uh, crop production, like uh, the production of rice, uh, for example, and uh, it's about the price analysis. So, uh, how much uh, the prediction by artificial intelligence? How much? How much the rate of accuracy in it? See, a lot of prediction can be done from artificial intelligence. Why just rice? Everything can be predicted. We we don't do that, but. yes like for example bsc stock exchange okay the ai can be used to tell you what uh, in fact ai is being used by many who, whoever is putting in money in the share market and stock they are using ai as well so there are a lot of ai applications that will tell you okay you put money in colgate you put money in intel or you put money wherever you want to put money they will tell you okay so so uh, ola is going to do good or you know zomato is not going to do good so those kind of recommendations uh the ai ml bots they can give you because they work on they don't work on hunch ai never works on hunch humans work on hunch what ai works on is historical data the the uh, it can be hundreds of data thousands or millions of data so historical trends patterns it derives and then it does a recommendation so there is one thing is called descriptive analytics then there is called predictive analytics and there is prescriptive analytics it gives you the prescription okay you put your money here so and and it has a uh, the data is its background so it's not on hunch it's not a human hunch it doesn't have feeling so it will just tell you based on the what data is available so it it, it has more chance to be correct that doesn't take away the fact that there are some great uh, hunchmen you know warren buffets who can really have a better hunch than an ai <laughs> ml but yes yes sir yes. of course sir sir so uh, now we are done with the questions and uh, i must say that uh, it was indeed a very very insightful session all of our participants have i think they have learned a lot of knowledge from you even i have learned a lot from you thank thank you so much sir so thank you sir thank you for your awesome valuable, valuable time and yeah thanks you mani i think you were a great host as well and thank you everyone who participated thank you so much sir thank thank you so much sir
so in the end i want to thank all the participants for your valuable time and patient listening this training is being organized by the partnership of just agriculture and agro environmental education and farmers welfare uh, society punjab with nahe pampuati udaipur vidhan chandra krishi vishwavidyalaya west bengal and P, uh, utkarsh pdkv and we are also grateful to the uh, to all our co uh, organizers and the knowledge partners and uh, in the end i would like to thank and congratulate dr dps badwal organizing director of this training program dr mohit bhardwaj co director of this training program members of the organizing committee and all the speakers and attendees of this session so thank you all for joining and have a great evening thank you all